audible and visible both uh, today on account of world heart day uh, i would want to first wish everyone a healthy heart uh, and a healthy heart day of course and we are live uh, yet again with uh, another topic uh, on of course discussing about the heart problems and similarly how we covered the functional nutrition approaches the last time for dealing with obesity we are going to uh, put some light on the functional nutrition approach towards managing heart problems uh, today i have uh, shagun arya with me so shagun would you please go ahead and introduce yourself yeah sure thank you for the opportunity ria so i am shagun arya i am a health coach at i thrive and uh, i think i was very interested in this topic because i have had a very close relationship to cardiovascular diseases since the time i have joined this company so i think it's a very good start uh, for a world heart day that we have this um, you know this live where we can answer people we can discuss what is actually the functional nutrition aspect towards a good cardiac health so i think it's a very good cause and it's a, i mean i don't see a better occasion than today to have this talk so yeah oh, yes. get started uh, absolutely uh, since it's uh the only day thursday that we go live and that's the irony that world heart day is also on thursday so our audience here would like to get good insights from you shagun since this is a topic that is close to your heart that you mentioned uh so yeah before now going ahead to the actual part of discussing the functional nutrition approach let's let's you know give a flow to uh, the talk today and first start with discussing about what heart diseases actually are because we usually just uh, broadly talk about heart diseases heart problems cardiovascular diseases so i i would just want to like uh, know from you shagun like what 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 would you want our audience to understand about what heart diseases are right so see whenever we hear the term cardiovascular diseases it sounds like a very heavy term right but it uh, does. exactly so but if we just think about it it's actually very self explanatory so whenever we if we like break it down so cardio means it's related to the heart and vascular means the blood vessels related to the heart so these are basically the diseases and the conditions which affect not only your heart but they can also affect the blood vessels which are you know uh, related to your heart okay so some examples you know some things which are very common that we hear so like hypertension stroke heart attacks atherosclerosis these are a few very common uh, types of heart conditions right and unfortunately uh, in the times like right now what is happening is that there has been a recent surge yes in the cardiovascular deaths and uh, which is a very sad state of affairs when we can you know actually these are non communicable diseases these are highly preventable these are lifestyle conditions so just by taking a few steps we can actually just improve these uh, you know our cardiac markers to a greater extent two things very uh, truly and nicely put shagun the, the way you explain uh, about what cardiovascular diseases are so guys whenever you hear about cvds these actually stand for cardiovascular diseases and the meaning uh, very beautifully explained by shagun and the other thing is you can really really uh, suspect your uh, you know uh, time uh, risk your timely risk your early risk for a heart problem if if it is developing because see in some people there are apparent signs and symptoms that we can see in some people it is silently developing it is also one of the silent yeah. diseases that we can call right uh, we can call it as so there are again cardiac markers to which we would move on to now again looking at the uh, time that we have now uh, it's uh, no, it wouldn't be fair to discuss about each and every disease so if you want to like know about the disease you can uh, always uh, you know learn about it from our course so that's one other part i would want to now uh, put some light on uh, as shagun said that you can suspect an early risk for heart disease so what is it like what is it that you can do so this would be a part on you know basically diagnosing yourself your risk for a heart problem okay for a suspected heart problem so and if you are someone and if you want to like track how is your heart health these are some markers that would help you understand that so there's hsrt that can that is a very a good marker when it comes to heart problems again i'll discuss about why hsrt and what is hsrt actually indicative of it's not that if hsrt is i you are directly uh, you know uh, one, I, 
there's a there's a susceptibility for you to develop heart problems so let's first just listen to the uh, markers so there's hscrp there's homocysteine which is a very close uh, closely related marker mm -hmm. when it comes to heart problems there's esr right yeah. so all these markers and of course not to forget the famous lipid profile yeah. so, yeah. again uh, there are uh, a lot of components to be looked into when it comes to a lipid profile uh, mm -hmm. just looking at the total cholesterol levels uh, going high and panicking uh, and uh, putting in or popping in medications just to lower the cholesterol levels while ignoring all the other causes at all is again a not is not at all a good idea so total cholesterol so i am just breaking up the lipid profile for someone who's not heard about it so you will find parameters like total cholesterol this hdl this ldl this triglycerides so all these are part of uh, your lipid profile so uh, in this uh, the markers that you actually need to look for are you know the hdl level so if your hdl levels are low so that's uh, in if i put it in short that's the good cholesterol that uh, you know uh, should be in adequate quantities and the optimal ranges so if it is uh, on a lower side then there is something that you need to start working on right when it comes to you know preventing yourself from a heart problem again coming back to the point on uh, high total cholesterol individually high total cholesterol is not going to be a problem if it is coupled with uh, other causes which we are going to discuss further uh, it is going to be a problem and of course if there's a high triglyceride uh, level that you uh, see that's a problem can you hear me shagun yeah i can hear you uh, you lagged for a bit but yeah i can hear you right. yeah yeah i saw a disclaimer on my screen yeah. yeah so that's about triglycerides high triglyceride levels and now uh, going back to the high total cholesterol shagun i would want to uh, like know from you that uh, when i say that if i uh, if high total cholesterol individually is not a problem if there are other causes that you know are uh, true for you only then high total cholesterol is going to be a problem would you like to just uh, put some light on what these causes would be sure so i'm actually glad that you covered this aspect of you know just not looking at the total cholesterol levels but also taking the other lipid parameters also in account but apart from that as you mentioned the hscrp the esr the homocysteine levels so even apart from looking at the lipid markers we also have to look at certain other areas of our body right so three major root causes that are the uh, you know they definitely add on to the risk of cardiovascular disease are inflammation insulin resistance and oxidative stress okay so see a lot of people tend to ignore this like you mentioned hscrp is a really good marker and quite recently i came across this article on a very famous uh, news site uh, which was talking about you know there's this one marker which can tell you if you at risk for developing heart conditions and uh, i read through the article i skimmed through it and the one which you were talking about was hscrp and like oh finally people are talking about it because we've been talking about it for a while yeah exactly and it was like okay finally it's coming out that you need to look at other markers right so of course let's take inflammation first so uh, see i'll just explain briefly what the concept of inflammation is so say you bang your knee against a table okay so there's like this swelling that you see on your knee right so similarly inflammation can also be like an internal swelling internal inflammation inside your cells now it can be caused by a variety of factors Okay, yeah, so that is what I was actually uh, going to ask you about. So external, yeah. internal. Uh, we usually see external inflammation is something that we can you actually can identify yeah. by the sweating and the redness, as you rightly said. Yeah. Uh, about the internal inflammation, yeah, not to cut you off, like you were just going to talk yeah. about the causes. That's a common uh, doubt, right? So how do we uh, know if you know there's internal inflammation in our body? So first, you have to see the causes. If you have a lot of chances of infection, right? if there is unhealthy lifestyle and diet if there is a lot of exposure to toxins you know your heavy metals your plastics uh, a lot of uh, parabens in your cosmetics or personal care items uh, all of that factored in a lot of chronic stress in your life alcoholism obesity and even a leaky gut right all of these factors they slowly tend to in induce a lot of inflammation in the body okay so these are some factors now some markers which are good for it as you mentioned are esr which talks about chronic inflammation you know if there's been a long standing inflammation in the body 
uh, HSCRP talks about acute inflammation, and then homocysteine also helps us find out the degree of inflammation, right? Uh, and if we talk about the other, uh, you know, root cause, that would be insulin resistance. Okay. So now we also need to understand what is the importance of insulin in our body, right? Uh, because uh, some people are confused. Okay, this is a very common generic term which is thrown off very easily, but we need to understand what it does, Absolutely. right? So uh, whenever we eat our food. Right, that food, especially the carbohydrates, they get broken down and uh, they get broken down into energy, which is glucose. Now, that glucose is actually supposed to be used by our cells for energy. That is the whole purpose of it. Now, the food is broken down, the energy, the glucose roams around in the blood. It needs to be transported into the cell. I Shagun is stuck. Uh, Shagun, can you hear me? Okay. So I think something's wrong on Shagun's end. Let's let's wait for her for some time. And uh, so just a quick uh, recap for the people who've just joined in. We are discussing about the functional nutrition approach to uh, manage heart problems. And until now, we have discussed uh, what can be the causes that can, you know, uh, develop or lead to the development of heart problems uh, inside your body. So Shagun uh, very beautifully uh, put across that there can be causes that you need to look into. She uh, went about explaining about what inflammation is, how, how there are two types of inflammation. Uh, external inflammation is something that we can, you know, notice. Internal inflammation she just talked about and she was just about to uh, explain insulin resistance and she started with what insulin is. So I think, yeah, Shagun is back. Yeah. Am I audible now? Yes, yes, you are. You are audible. I was just okay. giving the audience a quick recap of what we covered until now. Oh, okay, beautiful. So yeah, for people who have just joined in, right? So I think you've had a recap. So yeah, I was explaining about insulin resistance, right? So when your uh, cells, they start to become resistant to the action of insulin, that's when your blood glucose does not enter your cells, which is why you might also have symptoms of fatigue and tiredness because your cells are not getting enough energy right and sim uh, simultaneously your blood sugar levels are also high okay now what happens how can insulin resistance actually be a root cause behind cardiovascular diseases right that's a very logical doubt that people might have so see because of insulin resistance in the body there will be a state of hyperinsulinemia okay that is basically where there will be a lot of production of insulin but so you mean, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah, you you mean there, there's going to be High blood sugar levels along with high insulin levels, both the yes. scenarios. Okay. Yeah. So basically, the cells they don't get uh, the glucose, right? So they keep on sending signals to the pancreas to make more All insulin right. because they feel that insulin is not enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there will be high insulin, but there will also be high glucose levels. Okay. Right. So now, because of that high glucose levels, what happens is that your arteries they start to become you know damaged and they start to harden. Okay, so your blood vessels they start getting affected, which can then lead to the uh, other conditions like you know like atherosclerosis, where there is you know plaque formation in your arteries, right? And just to define what plaque would be, so plaque is basically the accumulation or buildup of you know uh, substances like calcium, fat, cholesterol, or fibrotic tissues, and what it does is it starts to accumulate in your blood vessels and it stops uh, uh, the flow of your blood. So, which is why you can have serious heart conditions because of that plaque formation. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, these are the two top causes. That, that's uh, something uh, interesting that I think should really be uh, understood. So, apart from the markers, apart from the inflammatory markers that we had discussed, uh, your uh, insulin resistance markers also add on to, you know, help you diagnose your early risk for a heart problem since insulin resistance and CVDs are so closely associated exactly. so exactly and the third cause that i would do uh, you know put some light on would be oxidative stress again we hear about this term uh, as uh, shagun rightly said we just throw it off like it exactly. is something 
that we you know uh, we we do actually suffer from it from a, a day to day basis it's just something that we fail to notice unless we see the symptoms so and especially since covid it's been like oxidative stress antioxidants these are like very common terms now common but terms. Terms. i mean it's so very hard to see people understand it exactly because that itself can also increase your risk so uh, that's a that's a concept i think uh, should be first understood uh, along yeah. with the causes because even oxidative stress uh, is a uh, risk uh, or is a risk factor is one of the causes that can you know lead to cvd so yeah. coming back to what oxidative stress is it's basically a outcome of oxidative damage inside your body so this mm-hmm. oxidative damage is something that is caused by you know formation of a lot of free radicals mm-hmm. now this is a term again we uh, hear about when we uh, talk about or when we read about oxidative stress again talking a bit more about uh, what free radicals are so these are these are uncharged molecules and these are because uh, uh, they are uncharged these are highly reactive mm-hmm. and because they are highly reactive they are in search of an uh, electron to you know scavenge them yeah. to you know become less reactive okay so in their attempt to you know sir, in their attempt to the search for these electrons they actually go around and damage uh, things uh, that they see in front of them so these uh, things would be your internals especially your cells your uh, protein your dna all these can get attacked by these free radicals now there are again uh, various causes on why free radicals can increase in your body free radical uh, mo- these molecules can you know increase in your body so the first and the foremost uh, reason behind increasing free radical or i would say oxidative damage and thereby oxidative stress would be the consumption of uh, omega 6 pufas okay omega 6 oh. pufas coming on from vegetable and seed oils that's also a marker that can you know cause inflammation inside your body right True. so that's one thing uh, another thing would be you know these toxins so they have similar roles in your body uh, similar uh, consequences that they can cause inside your body they can also lead to inflammation they can also lead to the formation of free radicals inside your body right mm-hmm. so there are Uh, there's omega 6 pufas there's uh, environmental toxins third and the most uh, i would say uh, potent cause for increasing oxidative stress inside your body would be smoking so oh, um, yeah. that's again very uh, closely related so that again makes smoking a very uh, uh, big risk factor for heart problems so that's about oxidative stress and collectively the causes that we have discussed uh, because in functional nutrition uh, we usually just don't go about the symptoms that are described by the client we actually look into the why of the symptoms right exactly. and in cardiac diseases you don't even see any symptoms until it becomes like very oh, serious yes. for as, as as i mentioned in the start right yeah. that for some exactly. people they might not be apparent signs, signs and symptoms but mm-hmm. there might be a huge risk that might be developing inside exactly. so you can save yourself uh, if you get tested uh, and if you know that you are suffering from these problems again there are different markers for oxidative stress also like yeah. there are markers for insulin resistance there are markers for oxidative stress also so that you need to first identify so uh, now when we move on to the solutions that the uh, part that most of our audience is waiting for exactly. we didn't uh, right to just directly start by you know functional nutrition uh, uh, the approach so now uh, starting with the functional nutrition approach and actually talking about the solution the first solution would of course be looking at the cause identifying the cause because without that you won't be able to do any justice to the symptoms that you are facing mm-hmm. or you know that would just give you a temporary relief right so exactly. that's that's about uh, the first solution that i would want to discuss anything from you shagun Yeah so see of course looking at the root cause of it sounds like the most obvious one but people usually miss that step the most basic step right but apart from that if you have got your root causes checked uh, something which is again very important is your diet right yes. so of course uh, a very good nutritious diet uh, with a correct proportion of nutrients is very important for a good heart health right? any so, things that you would like uh, want to mention when yeah. it comes to keeping a healthy heart Yeah, exactly. So see, uh, when we talk about heart, we talk about fats. It's like in tandem, right? So there's this form of fatty acids known as omega-3 fatty acids. 
okay so this is actually a type of fatty acids which is which are actually required in our body more than the omega 6 ones right so why they are so important uh, basically because these are anti inflammatory in nature okay so the inflammation which was a major root cause that they tried to cut back on right and apart from being a very good source of a healthy fat to your body they also help in lowering down your triglyceride levels and improving the hdl levels so like you mentioned in the start right that not only uh, being concerned about the cholesterol levels we also have to look at the triglyceride levels right so it helps lower down your triglyceride it helps improve your hdl levels and apart from that it also you know it's been found in research that it uh, reduces the platelet aggregation and plaque formation so what it basically means is that it basically reduces clot formation and reduces the chances of blockages in your arteries okay, okay. so okay. this again is a very important factor because uh, see the heart basically pumps blood to all parts of your body and all parts of the body pump blood to your heart for filtration right so there shouldn't be any clot formation there shouldn't be any plaque in arteries otherwise all the blood flow gets hampered right apart from that we also have to look at something known as vitamin d again it's the sunshine vitamin but uh, unfortunately uh, us indians even living in a tropical uh, country we still tend to be very deficient in this right so if you're not getting it from the sun please get it from the supplements because it's a very important nutrient mainly so because it's a very potent anti inflammatory compound so again cuts back on the risk of inflammation in the body okay and another one which is uh, not very commonly heard is coq10 okay so this is a very potent antioxidant uh, compound okay now it is uh, actually very important for energy production in the body okay so how it uh, works is it basically helps in the formation of something known as atp now atp is basically the energy currency in the body and uh, you might just know this fact but our heart is actually a very energy intensive organ it keeps on beating even if you're resting even if you're playing it keeps on beating it won't stop pumping right so it needs that amount of energy right so that is where coq10 steps up so basically in the form of energy it helps in there and it also helps as an antioxidant basically cutting down on your oxidative stress right and one last nutrient that i have to speak about is often ignored uh, are basically your electrolytes okay so electrolytes like sodium potassium chloride magnesium uh, phosphorus all of these combined uh, calcium for that uh, matter is really important when it comes Very to heart important. right so see uh, electrolytes what they help to do is they basically uh, help trigger and maintain electrical impulses in your heart so what that means is your heart needs to beat right and it needs an impulse for that so that electrical impulse is actually uh, it all these electrolytes they help generate those impulses so again it's a very very important part of your proper heart functioning okay all right that and, all uh, yeah yeah go ahead go ahead yeah so i was talking about the things that you should take right now there are certain things that you should definitely avoid also i was actually going to uh, talk about that only while you were speaking about the nutrients mm-hmm. that could be included we often hear when it comes to you know recommendations uh, to keeping your heart in a good shape or keeping a healthy heart we often things of the, we often hear of things to be avoided there there's a lot of things that we emphasize on to be avoided but then there are hardly any things that are you know or when it comes to food Uh, that are asked to be included so watch mm-hmm. out for the nutrients that chagun mentioned guys these are something that you should be including to you know prevent yourself or if you are suffering from a heart problem these are the nutrients that would actually help you i would okay. again now uh, want to uh, start with things that can be included because the exclusions part of it most of us are already aware about uh, of course i'll be discussing about that too because that would be an incomplete information if i don't uh, mention what should be avoided so yeah. i would just first want to uh, put some light to what can be included so what was earlier thought was or i think is still recommended to date that uh, you know you need to avoid eggs or yeah, especially the yolk part of it yeah. you need to avoid red meat exception exactly you need to avoid red meat you need to avoid butter you need to avoid ghee just because they are rich in something called as saturated fats right but let me uh, 
tell this thing to you guys that uh, this bunk uh, this myth has been debunked now uh, so this theory on uh, which they were you know actually asking people to uh, cut down on red meat butter ghee and egg yolk or eggs for that matter was because of the saturated fat intake but uh, saturated fat is something that you know is not prone to oxidation as the pufas are that the, that's the unsaturated fat right so these are actually uh, very helpful it uh, when it so when it comes to choosing these saturated fat sources it always depends on the quality so the quality is something that you need to look into so the red meat that you are getting from make sure that it is pasture raised right uh, grass fed that's one of the most important things to be looked into the butter the ghee that you are uh, getting it from uh, should be homemade or made from you know a2 milk or should be sourced from a local dairy uh, producer that yeah, i have a question here so yes. like commonly we see like salted butters and all right uh, that they're very common in the markets is that something that people can uh, use see uh, it would be better if you go for unsalted butter and okay. uh, again uh, sourced from a organic and you know local uh, producer right because yeah. it again uh, so there are certain additives and preservatives also added to it so we need to make sure that the source is as clean as possible the point to say here is if you are including you should include saturated fat sources in your diet the point to uh, to be not forgotten and to be always kept in mind is looking at the quality so that's one inclusion of course you can go ahead because these foods that i just mentioned are you know uh, packed with nutrients that you, your heart is actually in need of so you, you don't need to avoid those uh, you can go ahead and have those so that's about one inclusion uh, another uh, of course now i'll have to move on to the uh, exclusions would be yeah. uh, so we hear about uh, you know uh, these vegetable and seed oils being good and cutting down on ghee so that's again uh, a very um, outdated information vegetable and seed oils are something that you need to avoid as uh, shagun had mentioned that these are pro inflammatory and also lead to oxidative damage inside your body so that one thing you need to avoid again processed foods we hear about uh, these foods are really um, you know rich in additives preservatives so you need to keep yourself away from these uh, packed foods all right so that would be one recommendation and uh, you know sorry, i have to sorry i have to butt in and ask this okay. how can these additives and preservatives actually uh, impact our health these actually uh, they act as toxins to your body in the okay. end they they play a role of toxins so one of the sources of environmental toxins i would want to uh, actually call them as environmental toxins only which we you know uh, which enter our body through the consumption of these processed foods right so uh, mm -hmm. that's about because these are you know uh, endocrine disruptors these are called as endocrine disruptors and they disrupt the uh, hormonal balance inside your body and evoke a lot of uh, mechanisms like uh, inflammation and oxidative stress inside your body so mm -hmm. that's that's the reason why you know processed foods should be uh, avoided and uh now coming to one another uh, cause that you know would be apart from food is uh people are usually put on statins that's actually one of the questions that is asked that is cholesterol the main reason for heart attack so not always cholesterol or high cholesterol is the reason for heart attack because if high cholesterol would have been the reason then giving statins and reducing the cholesterol would have would been have the uh, answer right and yeah. people would have uh, been saved altogether from all the heart problems so that's True. definitely not the reason uh, so high cholesterol so i was talking about statins the medications that are usually that people are usually put on when uh, first they are like uh, looked at their lipid profile and the cholesterol levels are high the first thing that they put on uh, is statins and statins what they do is they they just reduce your cholesterol level they they don't look at the other causes that we have discussed right we uh, shagun discussed about inflammation she she talked about insulin resistance we discussed about oxidative stress there are so many other causes statins do not take care of these causes they just focus on reducing your cholesterol levels which is otherwise good 
it's not mm. that you don't require cholesterol at all if you don't provide your body with cholesterol it is still going to make cholesterol because it needs cholesterol it's such an important nutrient it uh, it actually acts as a precursor for the formation of so many different enzymes and hormones in your body all right and so it's funny that our body makes majority of the cholesterol absolutely so yes it's actually a very small function exactly because it needs that right so yeah, exactly. uh, uh, that that's something that you know uh, should should not be done and statins are not the answer when it comes to heart problems so i think uh, that question uh, is answered here and so there's another question and the final solution that we were going to talk about that why are heart attacks increasing in young people nowadays so there has been a surge there has been a rise that we have seen uh, the people literally dying of heart problems there's there's no uh, you know early sign also that they get they, the, these yeah, people are early used to be that you know you with certain age yes. you are at risk but now seeing it's very yes. sad to see that people are just you know there's no bar uh, when it comes to age uh, yeah. nowadays yeah. people are like literally suddenly dying they they call it uh, a sudden death but then uh back at i thrive uh, from what we have researched and um, this is a very thorough research when i say that um the most apparent cause that we can see uh, that is leading to uh, that has caused the rise in heart attacks and people uh, people dying of heart problems is the vaccinations that they are taking so i think we'll be doing a separate session on uh, vaccine that's another whole topic that uh, whole topic. and uh, yeah so in order to understand that it it requires you know uh, that brain and i think johan uh, would be the person we were actually going to discuss so we will be coming uh, with that also so i think at this point we also have to uh, add in like uh, we have come up with this protocol known as the rahul protocol oh yes the company had a personal loss of uh, an employee who passed away because of a heart condition right so uh, we came up with this uh, there was a lot of deep research uh, a lot of fact finding and that's when we came up with this protocol known as the rahul protocol in his memory so that is basically you can go to our site you can search for it and it's easily available it's free of cost please read it once i mean uh, yes, it that, be... that protocol actually mentions how you can uh, prevent or reduce your risk if you are uh, vaccinated to other heart problem so and the good thing is that people are now actually starting to talk about it i mean there are in the same protocol yes. there are no flipping talking about it as to why there's such such a sudden surge right in the cardiac yes. morbidity and mortality so you can i mean please let's just educate ourselves and it comes to what we injecting in our bodies so right. yeah so we need to uh, it'll be a really good read for you if you can go through it once all right so yeah thanks thanks for uh, adding that shagun and uh, so uh, i'll just repeat the uh, uh, the pdf the it, it's named as the rahul protocol for someone uh, who's just joined you can search it on our website i thrive in dot you'll find it so these were uh, these would be the solutions again uh, we wouldn't uh, recommend anyone just generally and blindly following these recommendations just because these are uh, coming from i thrive or functional nutrition base we would first emphasize you to look at the cause that's what we do all right so you can also uh, get yourself checked for an early for your early risk for you know if if some problem is developing inside so that's the help that we definitely uh, provide here and chagun any concluding remarks from your side yeah uh, i just have to add one uh, comment in the question that was asked that why are heart attacks increasing in young people of course vaccine is one factor but also the sedentary lifestyle which is increasing uh, oh, the kind of food and ems also to a greater extent like all of us are surrounded by devices the entire day uh, you know not exercising enough not having the correct diet just re- relying a lot on the processed part of the diet that is something that is definitely also being a causal and factor adding to this is the stress uh, that is you know yeah. increasing yeah. day by day if not yeah. uh, anything so that also is one of the causative factors why heart attacks are increasing in young people people exactly. so thanks for adding that shagun yeah 
so i think yeah. i'll from my side i'll just like to conclude with this you might call it cheesy but i'm going to still use this slide okay that, go ahead uh it, you know it is said that when it comes to matter of the heart uh, you know we don't have much say but i think i would like to defer here that when it comes to our heart health we actually have a lot of say we just need to take a charge of it you know exactly. it is heavy right <laughs> Yeah, it was heavy and packed up with a lot of say. <laughs> yeah, I'm hoping. Talked a lot about uh, it uh, during the entire session. So yeah. I think uh, it was helpful. I definitely uh, feel there was a lot. There were a lot of new things that our audience uh, uh, would have known about. And guys, please go back and get yourself checked internally, and yeah. you know, uh, find out about your risk for a heart problem. and we'll see you again on next thursday if there are any questions you can put them in the chat box all right or you can reach out to us via dm okay, okay there's I a question there last one. minute question <laughs> so it's yeah, saturated it's fat, fat or good so we just uh, talked about saturated fat i uh, so saturated fat is definitely good it's not bad okay it there it was a myth that that is i think still uh, going on still being recommended i don't understand where it's coming from because it's been debunked for a while so i don't I know. understand why it's still prevalent in practice so that's the beauty of research right that's the beauty of continuous research and development that is very uh, you know demanding when it comes to the nutrition field yeah. so that 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 something i think people fail to notice so that's your answer there saturated fat is definitely good and all the sources but you just need to look at the quality is what we had discussed right the quality of the saturated fat sources that you procure it from all right so i think we'll take a leave here thanks shagun for uh, joining and uh, you know putting across your beautiful uh, i would say views on managing heart problems thank you always a pleasure yes So thank you see you again next Thursday thank you guys bye everyone take bye. care